It took the Taliban just one week to regain control of Afghanistan, a country that a Western alliance tried to rebuild over 20 years. Despite billions of dollars spent on training Afghan troops to take up the fight themselves, many surrendered without a fight. Civilians are wondering what will come next. Will the Taliban reimpose the same brutal rules as when they were last in power? That all but eliminated women's rights. I'm Manya Coopers McKinnon, and this is DW News with special coverage of the Taliban advance in Afghanistan. With the situation we have right now, there's no guarantee of where the future of Afghanistan is leading to. I was a member of the Afghan forces in the Zafar Corps. Then I was surrounded by the Taliban, and now I've come here to get an amnesty letter so I can leave the city and find somewhere safe to stay. Everyone is tired of war, explosions and suicide attacks. We hope an Islamic system will be established in the country. The Taliban came to mosques. They told everyone that their fighters will marry off widows and young girls. They are here. I'm not afraid of them. We are not the people who will, you know, go back to the dark era. As we heard their fear, acceptance and defiance among Afghans after a week of watching the Taliban's rapid nationwide advance. The Islamist group was ousted from Kabul two decades ago by a US-led invasion after the September 11 attacks. Ever since, the militants have fought to retake Afghanistan with an end goal of installing Islamic law across the country. Many Afghan elites are fleeing the Taliban advance, but millions more are left behind, uncertain of what's to come. And for more, I am joined by Wazlat Hazret Nazimi, head of DW's Afghanistan service. Wazlat, the speed at which the Taliban uh, regained territory has been quite astonishing. How do you explain that? Well, I'm not surprised, to be honest. Of course, we did not expect them to regain the country at this speed, but we did expect them to get, regain control of many territories in uh, just a few weeks, which of course uh, happened even faster. So um, this is not something that we're surprised with. What basically happened, what we're hearing now, is that in many parts of the countries and many provinces, uh, the Taliban basically gave uh, governors the option, either a fight with us and there will be lots of bloodshed, or you can just give us the power and just uh, give us the control of provinces. And this happened in many provinces. So after nearly 20 years of fighting alongside NATO troops, training billions of dollars in weapons and equipment, why, uh, how could the Afghan army still have failed to hold back the Taliban advance? This is also not a new development. Many Afghan analysts have been saying this for many years now, that the Afghan military is underfinanced and badly trained. And um, But it was uh, American analysts and the American um, defense system who kept saying, no, uh, they are ready and we are ready to leave them, uh, which was actually not the case. And now we're seeing that it was wrong and it was, it was not true. Afghan military was not ready and the transition sh should have happened um, in, in a longer period. What do you see happening if the Taliban does assume uh, government control? We are hearing now that um, the Taliban, are, are, they do want full control of the government before they kept saying, or at least that was what Afghan politicians kept saying, that they want um, an interim government and they want to share the power. But what it looks like now is that they want full control and it might actually happen in a few hours that they will declare um, Afghanistan to be the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. Can you describe for us the feelings of Afghan women about the prospect of the Taliban being back in, in power? Of course, they have mixed feelings. Lots, lots of women are very scared. They fear for their lives. They, they, they fear for their freedom. But then we also see resilient women who are saying that they will not go back to, um, to the 90s and they want to fight for their rights. Um, it, if it remains to be seen what will happen, but um, Afghan women in general are disappointed. They're disappointed and they feel left alone by uh, their Western allies who promised them that they would fight for them and they would never leave them alone. Wazlat Hazrat Nazimi, head of DW's Afghanistan service. Thanks so very much.
Now, U.S. diplomats have been evacuated from their Kabul embassy by helicopter as their country's longest overseas mission comes to an abrupt end. It's just months since President Joe Biden played down any suggestions that the Taliban could capture Afghanistan or that this war would end up in scenes reminiscent of the one in Vietnam, with military helicopters taking off from embassy rooftops. Secretary of State Antony Blinken maintains, quote, this is not Saigon. And joining me now for more is Richard Walker and DW Washington correspondent Stefan uh, Simons. Richard, I'll start with you. Um, just a week ago, US President Biden was denying the fall uh, of Kabul was inevitable. How could he have been so very wrong? It does seem extraordinary, doesn't it? Especially given what we've just heard from Buzzlat there. It really does seem clear that the United States and pretty well every Western government underestimated just how quickly this would go. I mean, the images that we've been seeing, these evacuations taking place at a very hasty rate, uh, this scramble to leave the country is really evidence of that, of course. But it has been clear for a long time that the Taliban were poised to take over once, uh, once this happened, as we just heard from Waslat. And I think ultimately Biden's position is that he's prepared to accept that. He's taking what you would call in sort of foreign policy terms a realist position about American foreign policy, that the United States has to be realistic about what it can and cannot do in the world. And his view is that it's been in Afghanistan for 20 years. It's failed to build a state that can really stand up on its own uh, to the Taliban. And he's not willing to just stay in uh, Afghanistan ad infinitum until that day comes. Um, Stefan, if we can uh, turn to you now, um, is Biden getting the blame for calling it quits? I mean, what's he facing now after 20 years of war? Uh, kind of. He's getting the blame for the optics, for what is happening, how this is happening right now. Uh, I wouldn't say he's getting the blame for making the decision to get out of Afghanistan. I think this is uh, in the political spectrum here as well as in the American public. The majority of the uh, politicians as well as uh, the American public want uh, the U.S. to withdraw from Afghanistan, uh, if not entirely, then absolutely significantly. Well, we just had about 2,500 troops left there, so significantly is uh, there's more troops now to secure the uh, evacuation of the embassy and the American personnel and interpreters and people who worked for uh, the United States for the last 20 years than uh, there was just a few weeks ago. So he will take the blame um, on the other hand, you know, the buck stops with the president and he will take responsibility for making this decision. Now, what Richard said is absolutely right. That is uh, a problem for the Biden administration to come. Uh, they will get the, uh, their feet put to fire for this is the intelligence failure. What? They didn't see this coming 20 years in the country, it, it, all in all aspects of the uh, or reportedly in all aspects of the Afghan um, society. They have intelligence and they didn't see coming a Taliban force, basically starting like a blitzkrieg uh, on, on the national defense forces and marching to Kabul within a couple of months. Uh, that will cause some problems for the Biden administration in the next few hours, tomorrow, for the rest of the week, probably. And, and Stefan, can you um, tell us some more about the view of the American public on this war? Yeah, the American public uh, is done with uh, Afghanistan, arguably done for years with Afghanistan. You know, in America, this is called the forgotten war. And just because, and this sounds sarcastic or um, uh, not very really nice of me to say this, but just because what we see now, um, we're all awake to Afghanistan, what happens there, this is going to be temporary. And I tell you, there is political calculus behind this on both parties that Americans have a short memory on what is going on and for what is going on right now. The bottom line is Americans don't want American troops to remain in Afghanistan indefinitely or for many more years or for a year. It's done. Two point, almost $2.4 trillion uh, in the last 20 years invested in Afghanistan. As Richard, as you pointed out, this is from the perspective of uh, rebuilding Afghanistan, making it a different state from what it was before, a failed effort. So um, cut your losses and run. This is kind of the American uh, uh, population's uh, point of view here. 
Richard, the, the Taliban now look set uh, to be in control in Afghanistan on the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist, uh, terrorist attacks. Can you explain to us the significance of this? Well, of course, this is a hugely symbolic uh, day, isn't it? A, a major anniversary. And it was the 9-11 attacks that were the prompt to begin this war. The United States and its allies went into Afghanistan after uh, those terrorist attacks 20 years ago uh, to take out al-Qaeda and to take out the regime, the Taliban regime, that had given it sanctuary uh, in Afghanistan. And that does mean that despite the, you know, the domestic political context that Stefan describes there, internationally, this is going to be very damaging for US prestige to see the Taliban essentially triumphant in Afghanistan on that anniversary. Um, Richard, uh, briefly, if you could, what will that part of the world look like if the Taliban take power? Well, I think two things. Immediately, there's great concern about the possibility of a refugee crisis, of people wanting to escape uh, what could be coming towards them in terms of human rights. Uh, it could be an impending tragedy for, for many Afghans. In Europe, there's a lot of concern about what could happen here if many refugees try to come here through Iran and Turkey, for example. Secondly, this is a major geopolitical change in the region, in Central and Southern Asia. Um, NATO has owned Afghanistan for 20 years, essentially. Now they've gone. You have the Taliban there. Their closest allies are Pakistan. China is the great power in the region now. Uh, Russia also, of course, uh, to the north. What is China going to do? Um, that's going to be a very interesting thing to watch. Uh, they have had talks recently with the Taliban. The foreign minister of China received a Taliban delegation recently, perhaps an indication that they're moving towards recognising the Taliban, perhaps in, in concert with their Pakistani allies. Mm -hmm. So a major geopolitical change that is going to have consequences for years to come. Richard Walker and Stefan Siemens in Washington. Thanks so very much.